Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And first I wanna say thank you so much for supporting the channel, the comments, the subscriptions, all the input is really making me feel great. It makes me feel like I'm doing them on the right track with sharing this content with you, with sharing this childhood trauma work with you guys. And I, I, I'm really touched with how it's resonating and your feedback is really helpful. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a while because throughout my career in both inpatient psychiatry and in private practice, is I often get a common question about sort of from a family member, from a spouse, from a child of a parent is the question is sort of, you know, my dad is really narcissistic or my mom is really narcissistic or my partner is, is can you see them because I think they have childhood trauma. And if it's real narcissism or NPD of, of that like is I tend to sort of say, you know, therapy is often counterindicated for someone who has that. It's extremely unlikely and unfortunately it's extremely rare that therapy can help somebody with narcissistic personality disorder because therapy doesn't fit into their image of themselves. And there's a whole series of reasons why. And it's interesting, when I try to explain the reasons why therapy with a narcissist tends to not work, as I see the person's inner child who struggles with giving up on people who are bad for them, which is a very common wounded inner child thing, is to give up on somebody who's bad for you or give up the hope of the bad person's potential, which is a whole thing in and of itself, is I find that the person struggles with my answer or, or why I'm explaining it in that way. In other words, explaining why therapy doesn't work doesn't work. So I, I wanted to come up with a, a, with a video to show you why therapy with a narcissist tends to not work, tends to be counterindicated. And as you're watching the video, what I've done is I've done a role play with therapy with a narcissist in two quick sessions, these are shortened sessions, and to highlight the bull points of having that pathology work, trying to work with a therapist, is you could see how the whole thing plays out. So as you're watching, I want you to be thinking about the word image. The narcissist is totally focused on image of their, their own image, being in love with their own image, but more importantly, where it gets nasty is how they are being perceived by others. So I'm, I'm, I hopefully, I think you know what I mean by that. So session one is the first session, obviously. Session two is sort of the, the second and final session with this person. And uh, I hopefully that this is helpful. In a separate video after this, I'm going to be conducting a clinical analysis to explain the pathology of what is going on in the session in real time. And hopefully, maybe that'll line up with what you guys are thinking. And here it goes. We'll just get into it. Well, hey, welcome. You know, it's good to it's good to meet you. And um, we spoke on the phone, and you mentioned you wanted to do some work around some infidelity issues uh, that you have in your life. And I understand that your your wife recently caught you cheating and recommended that you come see somebody. And I understand things aren't really going that well. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about it? Ah, you know, the thing got really complicated really fast, Patrick. It um, it just got out of hand and um, I want you to know up front though I wasn't just looking for sex I mean sex was a part of it but I was really just trying to help this woman out like she had a bad boss she had a bad marriage she had the kids it was a mess and I don't know I just sort of fell into it you know and you know I, I see a ring on your finger and um, I'm sure you understand that in a marriage marriages get lonely you know marriages can get barren and I'm, I'm sure you can understand that. But no, things aren't really good right now between she and I. But you know what I was thinking, like on the, on the way over here, I was thinking of struggling with this, is maybe you can help me out with this, is um, I'm starting to feel like I, I gotta ask you, is that, am I a bad person in this, Patrick? Because I feel like this thing just sort of, it just sort of took off, it just could have happened to me. And I feel like I'm a bad person. Well, that's a big question, you know, and it's, it's, well, the way I tend to look at that, that or a question like that, is I try to go back and take a look at people's childhood, and mm -hmm. one thing I'm curious, and maybe we can just jump in, about if there was any infidelity between your parents growing up, and I feel like a good trauma therapist will ask mm -hmm. about that modeling about what went on at home, and when what a good trauma therapist would also ask you, what age did you start to cope with your feelings by using things like sex or food or Well, here's the whole thing. 
you know, I'm an open book. I will tell you the whole thing. And my dad, my dad, my dad worked hard. He played hard. And I felt really bad for my mom in that. But, you know, but she's a very negative, complicated person. And honestly, I would see them fight all the time. Every other day, the house was blown up in some kind of fight. And honestly, Patrick, I would, I would side with him because he had stronger points in the arguments and she just tended to be really negative. But out of that, though, is I feel like growing up between the two of them, I feel like I have a gift about sort of seeing both sides of things, looking at one person in their shoes, looking at the other person in their shoes. I'm sure you can relate to that because at the therapist, I probably would be a good therapist myself because I really, I really find that I can see many angles of what's going on with people. Hmm. Well, well, that was helpful, and there's a lot there, and it sounds like that dad maybe didn't respect your mother, and mm -hmm. maybe mom had some, maybe your mother had some codependency going on. You know, I'm curious about. For kids who grow up in that kind of constant distrust and argumentative environment, it's kind of related to maybe the problem you came in with is that um, children growing up in that, they don't really see parents value mm. each other, they don't see parents respect each other, they don't see parents honoring each other or enjoying each other. And it's, from what you're describing, it's simply the current problem might be something that was modeled for you. But what was going on at home is I would file that under emotional yeah, abuse. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. And I think um, they were just unhappy. And that's just how it kind of played out. Well, sure. But I'm just curious about, as I'm describing it as emotional abuse, one thing that I'm curious about is when I describe it at that, for kids who grew up in daily fighting, it is it is fall under that category of emotional abuse. But you know, to be honest, you know, it's, it's a little bit creepy. You know, I don't really, really like thinking about it in that way, and uh, I learned a lot from them. You know, they were good people. They were just complicated in their relationship. It's a bit, it's a bit creepy, yeah, to think about it, and you know, to kind of go back. Well, well, we're at time, and you can think about how you felt in this session. And if you wanted to book another session, is I would, I would really think about that because um, you mentioned the world word creepy about how you felt about us processing some of this stuff or talking about it is these sessions are hard in that way and but they are I find like they are related to the present problem and we try to we try to shift by figuring out where the problem started what I have people do is I mm -hmm. have them pick up a book called uh, homecoming by John Bradshaw and read the first four chapters which are very helpful and related to some of this stuff and the impact of what growing up in that environment was mm -hmm. like and it, it can help with a lot of stuff all right Sounds good. I can handle it. Okay. Well, hey, good to see you. Why don't you tell me how the week was, and I'm curious about how you felt when you left the session last time. You know, I felt amazing, and I felt really hopeful, and I feel grateful for you because you really held that stuff about my parents last time. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not that good, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe you felt good about naming something big that we can start to dig in and process, but... Um, Stuff doesn't really get healed in one session in that way. Did you get a chance to uh, get that Bradshaw yep. book? Got it online. Only took a couple days. And you know what? Gave it to my wife. I'm sorry, how do you mean? It's this whole thing, but you know, I know I shouldn't have, and I know what you're going to say, but the day after I saw you, I was going through her phone, and it turns out that she's been talking to her mother and her friends <clears throat> about wondering if she should leave me or not. Can you effing believe that? You know, so it's like 11 o'clock and I wake her up and I throw the book on the bed and I tell her she probably has a worse childhood than I did and she's more messed up than I am. Whoa, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused, you know. She's probably a, appropriately seeking help from her friends to sort of deal with given that there was cheating a couple weeks no. ago. No, not when she's sharing our business with the whole world. She's a very complicated negative person. And I have to see these people. Well... You know, but who should she be talking to? A therapist. To? Trust me, though, you don't want her, though, because, like, how many hours do you have to just have her complain about me in here, you know? <laughs> well, let's just back up a little bit, Mark, and, um, you know, you wanted some help about the cheating, and now, if I have you right, you're in a very different place with her. Am totally. I right? You know? It's not just me in this. 
Well, well, I'm curious about, like, you gave her the book, but what about you reading the book to go over maybe what we discussed last time about your parents? You know, Patrick, I'm a little bit taken aback because I'm not really feeling very supported in this with you. I have to see these people, and they only hear her side of the argument in this. Yeah, it's messy when a partner cheats, right? You know, I wonder what would make this maybe more productive between the two of us is to ask a weird question. I'm just going to jump in there. Is How would maybe your father handle your situation right now if he was in it? I ask that because I'm just going to be blunt, is that I think you're minimizing your infidelity and switching the focus on her. You know, well, you know what, Patrick? I think what would be more productive in this conversation is to talk about maybe maybe where you went to school, you know? I think going to a social worker and whatever that is was clearly a mistake, and I should have gone to a PhD. Well, Mark, now you're switching the focus and trying to put me down a notch. You can see whoever you like. Look, look, I'm sorry. You know, I was just hoping I could find someone who could really get me. And before I go, I should have said this up front, but before I go today, I need a letter stating that I'm engaged in therapy with you. You could say I'm depressed or something. I'm, I'm sorry, a letter for what? That's not really that important. You can just say, you could address it to whom it may concern. Well, Mark, this is only our second session, and I would really need to know what the letter is Look, for. Look, that's my business, and it's easy. You know, I can go grab a cup of coffee. With the time left we have in this session, you can write up the letter, I'll grab it, and I'll go. I know you're busy, so we can, you don't have to do it outside the session. You know, Mark, being engaged in therapy is at least a month or two months for me, and I don't feel comfortable giving you a letter if I don't really know what it's for. Hey, Patrick, that's fine. You know what? Then I'm just not going to pay for the session then, okay? You know, Mark... I think I'm terminating you. I, this is really not a good fit. I can yep. send you somewhere else. Sounds good to me. So there you have it. And as you can see, the session ended, the last session ended, and it quickly went off the rails. And I find that that has happened because the therapist was challenging the narcissist about their perception and how they were behaving with the wife. Um, I could have done, it could have been a wife who had cheated. It doesn't really matter the gender of the person. I'm not trying to sort of like spell anything out about men in this case. It really could be anybody. It could be a, a, a parent, a sibling. And I'm just trying to spell out to you what that person is like with the therapist. In short, they're not that different with the therapist. The therapist is not really going to have a lot of power outside of the usual sort of trying to idolize me and have some charm going on. Is it, It'll end up where it usually ends up in terms of a relationship sort of with a narcissist. So and again, in a separate video, I'll be doing a clinical analysis that you guys can watch out for shortly after to get into spelling out the pathology about how that was playing out in real time. And a, a couple last thoughts on it is um, the, the letter. I wanted to come up with something dramatic because the narcissist also thrives on drama. And I could, I normally do happily give a letter to people if they're seeking that out. But in this case, I felt like I wanted to include a game that the narcissist was playing, something that clinicians are weary of is called secondary gain, meaning that the person is coming to therapy not just because they want to grow and change and get better and look at themselves. It's like they have ulterior motives and like other people, they will be using the therapist to gain or achieve those motives. So that that letter could have been he might have wanted to get out of work, he might have wanted to, for who knows, it could be a million reasons. But that's why <clears throat> I was being firm with him is that you don't really get the letter just after a couple sessions, especially when you're not gonna sort of explain why you need the letter. And the money thing is like I think for a therapist in this position, when it goes off the rail that hard, I mean, it's sort of, you know, it is a sort of a threat about the, the threat that he used about the money, but most therapists are going to be sort of happy to see this gentleman go if they're really boundaried, if they're really sort of thinking about, like, is this really even going to be con so... You know, I know other people will be wondering about the money. So I hopefully that makes sense. Stay tuned for the clinical analysis video. I hope this video is helpful. As always, leave comments, ask questions if you had a lot, a lot of them. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these videos are helpful. Take care. Mm -hmm.